Alright guys, so we are at it playing Yu-Gi-Oh! Legacy of the Duelist. Um, so I can't foreseeably play the actual TCG for a while due to just issues. So we're going to play through this. Ignore the completion and all that stuff. I haven't played this essentially since it came out. So we're going to start from the very beginning. And let's see how it goes. Loading Yu-Gi-Oh! History. The story of Yukimoto begins at Domino High School, where Duel Monsters, the hottest card game in the world, was all the rage. Yuki was the best duelist around, and his friend Joey wanted desperately to learn how to duel as well. So our, so our history of Yukimoto starts with Yugi teaching the rules of Duel Monsters to Joey as their friend, friends Taya and Tristan Walk. Hey, Joey. First of Joey, it's your turn. Um, Brooklyn accent. Oh, isn't it cute when he's thinking? Hey, Tristan. Yugi's here. Here's teaching me how to play dual monsters. Dual monsters. Dual monsters and Nimrod. They've been at it for hours. Joey's starting to get the hang of the game, but Yugi's like an expert. Okay, Yugi. It's time to duel. You can read the list. I'm not gonna read out the tips to you. Well, wow, starting intro. Greetings, duelist. I am in for mate. Part of the virtual game simulator. I have game program. Okay, I don't need to be taught how to play Yu-Gi-Oh. I've been playing this game since I was a kid. completely forgot that the whole like deal with the extra monster zones and all that don't exist and it, it is really a blast in the past to have this and I missed it so much okay so this thing's attack is 2400 That summon no uh, end turn, I guess. Why am I changing this to, to, to attack position? What did... Fine. Alright, switch it to battle phase. How do you switch to battle phase? Oh, you have to... L okay, you have to right click switch battle phase. Yuck. 250. See, I wanted to get this dude out because he's 2400 attack points. And essentially, at this stage of the game, the only thing that could really take it out is Summon Skull. So, there's that, but apparently, we're not doing that. But yeah, I, I remember like this episode. I remember this entire arc. I remember essentially being a child and just being so happy about this show. And I remember playing it with my brother a lot. I don't know why it forced me to remove that, but okay.
So you can send one phase of continuous spell you control to the graveyard and target one monster your opponent control can destroy that target. Wow, they even corrected everything for saying target in this. Wow, that's kind of cool. Activate that, and I will get you back. Uh, is is this enough? Is this lethal? Yeah, it's lethal. <sighs> Sorry, I feel a little bit sick right now, but here we are playing battle phase, and this should be lethal. But this was such a fun game, especially like in this era. It was a lot. I mean, it was a lot slower. It was a lot cooler. Um, I do like modern stuff. I do like the modern game right now. It is fun too. But my issue with the modern game is mainly that it's so difficult to actually get into it if you have no experience with the game itself so what ends up happening one second this afternoon Yugi and his friends went to grandpa's game shop Yugi wanted to show his friend his grandpa's prized possession Gramps could you show my friends your awesome super rare card rare card you mean my special card? Hmm. Please, please. Uh, how can I refuse? You kids are in for a treat. I don't take this card out too often. Ready? Here it is. The blue eyes white dragon. So rare, so powerful. I never let it leave my hands. But the scene in the anime that you're doing is like it's not in your hands. This card is priceless. There are only four of them in all the world. Cool. I have like 15 copies. Suddenly, a classmate fr from school ran into the shop. His name was Seto Kaiba, the young CEO of Kaiba Corp. He had found the card he was looking for. Name your price for blue eyes. I can pay anything you ask. I'm sure you could. But this card is worth more to me than you could ever offer. Seen an old fool. Kaiba stormed out of Grandpa's card, Grandpa's store. The team was disrupted by Kaiba's obsession with Blue Eyes White Dragon. The next day, when Yuki came back to the store with his friends, he found Grandpa was gone. When the phone rang, it was Kaiba on the other end, mocking Yuki that he kidnapped his grandfather and took him to Kaiba Corp. Yugi and his friends rushed to Kaiba Corp and found Grandpa lying on the floor, defeated. Grandpa, are you okay? Yugi, I failed. I wanted to teach that boy Kaiba a lesson about the heart of the cards, but I lost. It's because you have a shit deck. Grandpa! How was the old man feeling? Hmm? Kaiba, you sleaze. What have you done to him? We had a duel, that's all. We each, each of us putting up our most valuable card as a prize, but I guess playing against a champion like myself was too much stipulation for the old fool. Kaiba, you should be ashamed of yourself. Look at the sweet prize I won. Kaiba held up Grandpa's blue eyes white dragon and ripped it in half. Grandpa's most treasured card! Blue eyes white dragon is a rare and powerful card. This one will never be used against me, but you still can use it. Okay, still technically a legal card. My grandpa's blue eyes white. My blue eyes white dragon. My treasure. Grandpa, hold on. How could you do such a thing? Yugi, take this. Huh, Grandpa? I built this deck. I put my soul in these cards. I taught you everything I know, Yugi. Take my cards and teach Kaiba respect for the heart of the cards. Okay, Grandpa, I'll do it. Are you ready to play? Grunt. 
Playtime is over, Kaiba. Huh? Kaiba was taken aback by Yugi's sudden transformation. It seems like he had become a different person. He, yeah, he became like a foot and a half fucking taller and dropped like three octaves. As if he was more confident and powerful than before. Kaiba, prepare yourself. Because it's time to duel. Story game. Okay. Of course, Kaiba goes first. I mean, he has pretty much just like a beatdown deck to end all beatdown decks. Ooh, I got the Exodia here. And essentially, this deck just stalls out. But yeah, uh, what I was talking about before was it's just like more modern Yu Gi Oh! My biggest issue with it is just the speed of the game. Because if you're trying to just play the game and you're trying to learn it, or trying to teach it to somebody that doesn't really have any know-how of the game, or you know has any familiarity with games, like games like Magic or Yu -Gi -Oh, uh, Pokemon, something like that, you know you're going to be in a lot of trouble trying to get it so that oh there's an animation for the blue eyes cool they can learn it to a proficient level and then I mean I know that meta has always existed I know there's always been deck tiers but it seems a lot less possible for some kid just to buy packs of Yu-Gi-Oh cards and hope to be able to build something out of those packs like I, when I was a kid because I didn't have any real semblance of what to do with a deck I essentially just put together what I bought like in terms of packs or something like that or the very 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 rare singles that I would ever get like the injection fairy lily or man there were so many random cards that I got that were singles uh, that were like two three five sometimes ten dollars and it was only because uh, either I got an advance of my allowance I got an allowance um, it was a birthday or something similar to that where I could actually have a little bit of extra spending money just so I could buy singles or if I did really good in school I'd be able to do that I'd get singles at a car shop that was an hour away from my house that for some reason my parents let me and my brother them to take us to so what I'm trying to do right now is I'm trying to just stall out right here but yeah it's not like then where you could kind of just smash some stuff together sometimes it would work sometimes it wouldn't like when I was a kid my main uh, essentially deck was uh, a level Four and under deck. Uh, no, level three and under deck. So everything was centered around level three and under. So injection friendly, anything that could attack directly, use a gravity bind, all these equip cards. So it was kind of like a weird, like stall burn deck that sent around getting like the injection friendly or getting like the blue eyes out with flute of summoning dragon because there was no uh, at least ruling in my locals about going about you know having the blue eyes not affected by the gravity bind or any of that stuff because everything was vague and the rules were made up at locals Whereas now it's a lot more formalized of a thing. And it was really neat to live in that time. Yeah, I'll destroy it because it just lowers the amount of cards in my deck.
but that, that that's kind of like how it f essentially how I feel about today's modern Yu-Gi-Oh in terms of like you have to play the meta even at a local level where when I was growing up you could kind of get away with a little bit more leeway mainly because the game was just inherently slow and when you have a slow like format obviously you're going to be able to get away with a lot more stupid all right i think i'm going to actually be able to beat him without yeah i think next turn i beat him without exodia Which, I don't know how that happens, but... Uh, one, two, three. If I get the other piece of Exodia, I'm gonna torch my own field. <coughs> Alright. Is this a once per turn? Did they change this to once per turn? Oh, they changed Sagan. Or Sangan. I'm gonna win by Exodia, I don't care. I will throw this. I will set you. I will set you. And I will end my turn. I don't think I got Exodia in my initial playthrough of this game, in this duel. I think I ended up winning by life points. Why wouldn't you go for the Heart of the Underdog card, like... Exodia, obliterate! That's why you lost. He's a fucking national champion. Actually, no, isn't he a world champion in this? But if you put your heart in the game, there's nothing you can't do. Except for repeat Yuki. The results of the duel spread quickly. And a mysterious one-eyed man gets news of Yugi's victory. Hmm. I really wish I could do Pegasus. By the way, he's 24. This dude right here is 24 years old. This guy. He is 24. Hmm. It seems Cover Boy has been defeated in a duel. I must learn more about this Yugi Moto. As you can tell, I am great with acting, voice acting. Alright, let's play against Virgil Underwood. This is the insect dude that threw Exodia into the ocean. So, I d before I read this, I don't understand why the fuck, if you have a couple of you have five cards in your deck that apparently had never been printed before or after you had them, and they belong to your grandfather. Why you would hand it over to somebody on the edge of a ship? You go, yeah, you know what? You could see them when we fucking dole or some shit. Like, Yugi was too trusting. I mean, there's no reason to not trust people, but... I don't know if it's a one-of-a-kind thing that is apparently tournament legal. Why are you showing it to him? After this win against Seto Kaiba... Yugi was puzzled to receive a package from Maximilian Pegasus, the creator of Duel Monsters. Inside the box is a videotape. Hey, remember what VHS is? Yugi inserted the tape into the VCR. The fucking VCR. VCR. And Pegasus' face popped onto the screen. 
Greetings, little Yugi. I am Maximilian Basis, and I heard some terribly interesting things about you. Your impressive feat of Seto Kaiba intrigued me so much that I dedicated, decided to investigate your amazing dueling skills personally, right here, right now. Let's, we shall hold a special duel. Certainly, strange and arcane magic froze time so that there, no one could move except Yugi. It's a dark dimension where it is known as the Shadow Realm. Isn't it like fucking hell or some shit in the manga? Or the, at least the Japanese version? A mystif, mystical place where incredible monsters can be summoned and the impossible is quite possible. Tell me, Yugi, do you believe there is magic in these cards? Don't you know you invented this game? What if I told you I didn't? Huh? It's Yami Yuki. You should know this. In ancient times, the Egyptian called this the Shadow Game. Powerful pharaohs would hold mystical duels in order in other dimensions, just as we're doing now. But instead of cars, they battled with real monsters and real magic. The magical forces were so powerful that the Egyptians lost control of them and were nearly destroyed the entire world. It's a good story, but these monsters can't be real. Those monsters are very real, and also quite dangerous, Yugi boy. You really are quite entertaining. The way you scowl and sneer, so defiant and yet helpless and so completely ignorant of the power of your Millennium Puzzle. Yugi looked down at the Millennium Puzzle that he wore around his neck. The power of my puzzle? 5,000 years ago, a pharaoh locked the magic of the Shadow Games away in seven, seven mystical Millennium items. Seven items. You're saying that my puzzle is of them? Yes, and there are mystical energies locked within it. Magical that that could magic that could be could change your life forever if you only knew how to unleash it. As the two dueled, it seemed that his Pegasus knew every move Yu Yu was going to make before he did. Despite the disadvantage, Yu Yu mustered all of his skill and nearly won. But Yu Yu ran out of time. Then the time went pierced. I was taking the measure of your talents this day, Yugi Moto. And when next we duel, we shall play for far higher stakes. I'm done with your games. Tisk tisk tisk. You presume I'm giving you a choice in the matter, but I'm not. For I also possess one of the seven millennium items. The all powerful Millennium Eye. The millennium Eye? Yeah, no shit, the Millennium Eye just said that, dude. That's right, Yugi boy. I'll show you the true extent of the magic. I have found found that given the proper incentive, anyone can be made to play my game. The power of the Millennium Eye lashed out and stole Grandpa's soul. Shit. Yugi could only watch in heart. Yugi. Grandpa. We will do again, Yugi. How else will you ever reclaim your grandfather's soul? Yugi had no choice but to compete in Pegasus' Duelist Kingdom Tournament so that he could get his father's soul back. A Duelist Kingdom, each Duelist was given two star chips which they could wager against other Duelists on the island. Whoever earned ten star chips gained entry into the tournament finals which they could compete for a three million dollar grand prize and a chance to duel Pegasus himself. Okay, uh, that's a mistranslation. It's actually three million yen. Um, that's not three million USD. So it's three million yen. It's far less. I don't know how much three million yen is off the top of my head, but it's not three million dollars. For his first duel, Yugi faced off against the convincing, conniving. Weevil Underwood, a duelist 
with whom he had a bit of history. While riding the boat to Duel's Kingdom, Weevil took Yugi's precious Exodia cards and threw them into the ocean. Because Yugi's a dipshit. So when Yugi spot, spied Weevil on the island, he chased him into the woods. Welcome, you. Welcome, said the spider to the fly. You flew right into my trap. It's time you answered for destroying my Exodia cards, Weevil. Can't let you. Can't let bygones be bygones? Gee gee gee. Weevil, it's time to find out if you're as good at dueling as you are running away. Was I simply running or was I cleverly weaving you into my web? Time to duel. <sighs> That's a lot of reading. That's a lot of reading. I'll go first. Mainly because I don't have a going second deck. No deck in this game is really a going second. Oh, they they but they did keep the master rule what? Four or five of the starting player doesn't draw. And I will end my turn. The goal essentially is to get the summon skull out. What's that thing's attack now? Alright, he takes 500 damage. Summon. I will get rid of you. Summon the summon the skull. Put it under attack. Punch this thing in the fucking face. It's a bug versus a arch fiend. Does it say in the card thing? Yes, this is always shit as an arch fiend. Yep, they, they put that in there. I believe that's a man eater bug. Set it and forget it. But again, this is a game in an era where you could get away with using like swords and stuff like that to essentially delay. I mean, I know that people do use swords or revealing light in modern Yu-Gi-Oh! to a very, very small extent, but I haven't seen anyone use swords in a hot minute. I mean, I did have one guy use it to me at an OTS tournament, but that just seems like more of a rarity than anything. Now I'm going to let this work. Take Crystal Charity. I miss being able to play this card. I mean, but it gives you so much graveyard advantage that it's it's a broken card. Which man, it was so fun to be able to use Graceful Charity. And ima imagine if you could use that nowadays with the amount of like graveyard control. He's got to kill that. What could be down there? Um, I'm just gonna put a put a put a timer on this game now. Now this becomes a game of just wait. So now he draws standby face. He takes 500 points of damage, and this is just gonna continue on like this until you know something happens. And I'm just going to let it go, and if this is how this duel ends, which is going to be pathetic, that this duel comes to an end because of a burning land, 
Oh, and so be it. Uh, okay, that's just insect monsters. Okay. Put you right there. Activate the horn of the unicorn on you. And you're at 3200. I will attack. And then I will end my turn. And then this will do an extra 500 points of damage. It just puts a t this just puts a timer on the entire thing. And it'll get rid of that. Which is fine. I think that gets rid of that. Or if it just... I think it just does damage each of the uh, turns. Clear out your field. Okay, I'll take that damage. And I'll attack you. Okay, I'll take that damage. And I'll end. And now they got everything face up. We got 2,500, uh, 1,700 attack point monster. So you gotta continue to get damage. I have. Mirror forces. I don't know if there was a specific wing condition that I was supposed to seek this duel or not, but I guess that's not the case. I have a feeling that, yeah, this is game. I'll summon you, turn you to attack. Gotta go to battle phase. Attack with some skull. I'll attack with you. You're the highest attack point monster. Uh, I have a feeling that next turn is game. Yeah, next turn is game. GG. GG, no re. Alright guys, so that is going to wrap it up for today. Feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. And we will be out of here. And then next time we will be continuing. Uh, we're going to skip over this dialogue because I don't care about it that much. Skip. And the next duel will be you, Joey Wheeler versus Taya. Yeah. Joey Wheeler vs. My Valentine. So feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you next week with another Legacy of the Duelist video. Peace.